these pictures were taken in 1988. Huge electricity towers were blast off their foundations in a spate of bitter action by the Panguna Landowners Association against the government. They were in direct retaliation to inaction by the government to their demands for better protection of the environment, huge back payments of profits from Panguna Mine, and a massive 10 billion kina compensation. Seen as deliberate acts of sabotaging mine operations and the economy, the government of then Prime Minister Rabi Namaliu sent in security forces to guard mine installations. Joseph Kabui was the Premier of North Solomon's provincial government at the time. He and several other local politicians were beaten up by police. And the police and workers from other parts of Papua New Guinea came under attack from the BRA. Joseph Kabui soon realized he was caught between two forces, the lawful authority of the government and the increasing resentment and jungle authority of the BRA. I think it's, it's uh, good for men to to uh, look at any problem or any issue or any crisis um, affecting him, to look at it with a positive outlook. And uh, it's true that um, so many attempts you know, have been made. So many attempts, uh, governments have put into it, village leaders, church leaders have put into the, into the whole crisis. And, uh, um, there can be a temptation or tendency to to um, say that that's it. You know, there's no more, no more answer to the problem. So I believe that um, we still can make some sort of a breakthrough. From the start of the conflict, the man who rose to the top command of the Panguna landowner struggle, Francis Ona, never reappeared again in public after he quit the employ of the Bougainville Copper Limited, first as an engineer, then as operator of the 70-ton dump truck. The other man who became a leading figure in the struggle by the Panguna landowners was Sam Kawona. With distinguished Australian military training to his credit and his growing sympathy for his people, he quit the PNG Defence Force and disappeared into the hills. He assembled an illegal military outfit and called it the Bougainville Revolutionary Army the BRA. He masterminded the felling of the power pylons. He single-handedly took on the might of the security forces with a keen following and support of the young people. For obvious reasons such as inferior weapons and the lack of logistical support, Kawana ruled out open warfare. He let the troops face him and his army in their own backyard, in the jungles. When communication between Waigani and Panguna failed between Prime Minister Namaliu and Sam Kawana, the government imposed a total blockade around Bougainville. Before that happened, a team of United Nations observers from Canada, Vanuatu and New Zealand were allowed into Bougainville to observe the ceasefire and find out if peace talks could resume with the help of a third neutral party. In January 1991, the member for East Sea Peak, Sir Michael Somare, led a delegation from Port Mosby to the waters of Kieta aboard the New Zealand ship HMNZ Endeavour. Joseph Kabui led the team from the BRA and the Bougainville interim government. Pais Winti was installed as Prime Minister after the elections in 1992 on a party platform of solving the Bougainville problem. He appointed Michael Ogyo as Minister Responsible to deal with the Bougainville conflict. Their solution was simply to send back troops onto Bougainville and restore government control, as well demanded the unconditional surrender of the BRA. Sir Julius went to the Honiara Peace Talks three days after he was voted as new Prime Minister. The BRA commander Sam Kaona and his wife Josie made it to Honiara, dodging security forces through swamps and unfriendly territories. Come no me no here. Solomon Islands, no meeting you, see? 
Me no come along here is a sign of surrender. I'm here for nothing more than to see peace. A peace settlement in the world. Not for justice, but for a long time. Under Sir Julius Chan as Prime Minister, Papua New Guinea took the biggest step, the engagement of a Pacific peacekeeping force in Narawa. But the intended members of the BRA did not come to the party. The BRA, the military arm, and the Bougainville interim government, its political umbrella, have been difficult, sticking to their extreme agendas. All is not lost, though, the Prime Minister once said of the conflict, Bougainville should be approached with a new spirit that will lead to a new deal for Bougainville that will create a new Bougainville. I want to define all of those terms and, and Bougainville transitional government as a definition for all of them. It is with that concern and the fact that the conflict has gone for seven years that the Premier spearheaded new peace moves. Mr. Miriong, a lawyer come politician, is a man of his own, a deep thinker who is not easily persuaded. As a key figure in the Bougainville transitional government, the Premier feels he's up against a rock and a hard place in trying to find a solution. The BRA and BIG want total autonomy on the one side, a proposal unacceptable by the PNG government on the other. We want, first of all, to solve this crisis in an effective way, in a beneficially lasting way. And in order to do that, we want to have a structure that is already being planned in Bougainville and to put through that structure, political structure, administrative structure, which will basically touch at the village where the man, woman and a child is. Yeah. <laughs>